On this program, we're going to learn about the Zion Gate. I'm standing here, you can see the bullet holes above and the mezuzah behind me. The conflict of the Jewish people returning to the land and God's goodness in opening up the gates of Jerusalem. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go, let us go to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. Yes, let us go, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss and welcome back to our series, In Jerusalem, Ancient Gates and Future Glory. Yeah, with, this is really exciting. We get to bring the gates of Jerusalem to you. Last week we looked at the Dung Gate, the one that enters right. into the Western Wall. And this week, the Zion Gate. The Zion Gate, it's such an important gate. You know, it's where the Israeli IDF went in and took back the holiest place to the Jewish people, the Western Wall. They entered in through the Zion Gate. So on the outside of the Zion Gate, you will literally see bullet holes left there mm -hmm. to remind them of the, 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 bitter, the bitterness of, of the yeah. loss, but at the victory at the same time. Yes. And on one side, you'll see a mezuzah, yes. which is God's signpost to us. And it's His command for us to put this mezuzah on our door and on our gates yes. to remind us to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, yes. and might, and to teach our children in the way when we rise up and when we sit down. That's well said, and we enjoy doing that with Absolutely. our children. They're grown men now, but still always important to pass on the legacy of what God is building in your family, through your family. Yes. Well, our guests today, we have Shimon Gibson, the archaeologist, his book, The Final Days of Jesus, The Archaeological Evidence Verifies through the dirt, through the rocks, through the science of it, that in fact the word is true. You knew that. And David Parsons from the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, a great spokesman, the media director for the international work, and just a real heart for Israel and for the church at large. And special music by Marty Getz, psalmist, messianic leader, musician, and a good friend of our ministry. So without any further ado, let's go to the Zion Gate and see what we can learn. We'll see you there. We're here in Jerusalem. Behind me is the Mount of Olives. To my right, the Zion Gate. You know, Psalm 87, verse 2, tells us, Achev Adonai Sharei Zion. The Lord loves the gates of Zion. How much more so right here at the Zion Gate. And you can see behind me that this gate was won by a hard-fought battle. Absolutely. You know, Jerusalem was known as Zion when David conquered this city and also when the Israelites took back the city. In 1967, the Israelites came and took back the city of our Lord through this gate. And behind me, you can see the literal bullet holes. You know, the bullet holes remind us that there's always a battle over Zion, over Zion, which means signpost. And there's always a battle for the Word of God and the truth of the Word. Yeah, not only is Jerusalem the desire of all nations, you can see that there's conflict in this nation. And you know, God says that, it will, that we're not to hold our peace or give him no rest till he makes Jerusalem, Zion, a praise in all the world. You know, right now, those two things aren't matching, but that's why God has called us as watchmen on the wall to stand and to make up that hedge and to pray for his will to be done in this earth. Yeah, Catherine's referring to Isaiah 62, which calls us to be watchmen on the wall. And we really need to be that way. The Zionist movement began in 1891 back in Europe, in Austria, when Nathan Birnbaum wrote a story about it in the news. And then Herzl picked it up in 1895 and wrote Der Judenstadt, calling for a Jewish homeland. And well, we've had a homeland. We've been here forever. In fact, when David named this Zion, it was 3,000 years ago. We've been here that long. 
Miles, I'd like to just read that scripture. It's Isaiah 22, verse 6, and it says, I have set watchmen on thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace. Day or night, they shall make mention of the Lord and be not silent. And that's what we need to do as God's watchmen on the wall is to not hold our peace, but to stand with the people, the land, and the plan that he has for this nation. Right now within this gate, there are people praying for the one new man to arise in Israel, for a Jew and Gentile, for Jews and Arabs to worship the Lord together. And that is being contested. But the Zion Gate speaks to us about the future also of Israel because God is calling us to be here with him. He's going to touch down near here on the Mount of Olives. He's going to come through the Eastern Gate and we're going to see him. He's going to rule and reign from Zion for a thousand years. And we're looking forward to that day. Our offer on this program, the DVD, Acts Then and Now. The story continues. In this series, viewers will walk in the footsteps of Jesus and his apostles and journey with the gospel from Jerusalem to Ephesus to Corinth and Athens. Miles and Catherine interview key leaders in the body of Messiah regarding the glorious effect of Yeshua on contemporary Israel and the world. Eight programs on two DVDs. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for Acts, then and now. Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zona Levitt Ministries for many years. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas. 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. We're coming through the Zion Gate. You can see life is teeming everywhere in this area. Cars are coming through. This is a living city. And it's appropriate that the Zion Gate leads to the Jewish quarter, also to the Armenian quarter, two of the four quarters of the old city. Zion Gate, Zion. That word is so maligned in our day, it's hard to believe that it still uh, has the meaning that David meant it to have. You know, the Arabs have contested whether there's ever been a Jewish presence here, and in a fit of humor that only God could provide, they actually call this gate Bab Nabi Daud, the gate of David the prophet. So they are acknowledging that David, that King David, uh, Yeshua's great-great-grandfather, was here in this place. In fact, he built this city in 3,000 years ago, and it still stands. We need to be praying for the people that live inside this gate. We need to be praying for the Jewish people in the Jewish quarter. We need to be praying for the, praying for the religious. We need to be praying for the believers in this land as well. We need to call on the Lord for wisdom, and that's what's needed in this hour. You know, there's a great pushback against the Zionist movement. In fact, that word has become so negative on college campuses in America, for example, and around the world. But it's always been in the heart of God to lift up Zion, to bless Zion, Zion. The word Zion means signpost. And this place, this city, this Jewish restored homeland is a signpost that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is Israel, is alive and well, and that his word will, will withstand forever. And that's really what's contested here. The contest is between the word of God and the rest of the world. And in fact, the word is elevated here in the very existence of Zion. We also need to be praying about the church, that believers around the world would come through the replacement theology that has overtaken it, that says that there's no place for Israel, there is no reality to ethnic Israel, and that the church has replaced it. When in fact, Israel is called and the gifts and callings are without repentance. In fact, God has never uncalled Israel. And that's what is seen here. In the Zion Gate, we see the reality of the restoration of Israel, the restoration of the Jewish people, and the calling of the Jewish people back to our homeland where God promises that he will sprinkle clean water on us. And we're seeing that happen with the first fruits of Zion, the Messianic movement. We're seeing that as believers are rising throughout this land. 20 years ago, every believer knew everyone else in this land. And now they estimate 
that there are about 15,000. Let's pray that the Valley of Messiah continues to grow in Zion, in Zion. The Zion Gate really speaks about the return to Zion, the going up to Zion, uh, the reestablishing of the state of Israel, Zion, in our modern era, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I, you know, the scripture talks about that. Blessed are you whose feet yes. have made have made are set to make pilgrimage yes. and to go within the gates. Yes. You know, in Lamentations it talks about in Lamentations one four that literally the road was in mourning because wow. the gates were closed and the people could not go up to wow. keep the feast or the festivals. Yeah. But that is not the day in which we are in now. Yes. We're in the time of the fulfillment of Bible prophecy yes. when people, when they're flowing up to Mount Zion, exactly so. the city of our God. Yes, in fact, the nations are joining in. The Jewish people are coming up to keep the feast yes. as always, but now the nations are joining in and it's a precursor for the future in the Millennial Kingdom when at the time of Tabernacles, Sukkot, that the entire world will come up to keep the feast with the Jewish people. It's no wonder that Deuteronomy 6, 9 tells us, Uchtaftam al mizozot b'techa uvisharecha. Write them mm -hmm. on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. It's a physical writing, but it's a spiritual writing as well. We are to keep this word in us. And I like it how that you post it by your eyes. Yes. So it's a visual reminder yes. of God and yes. His call on us yes. to love Him and to love Him with all of our heart. And then to pass that on to our children, yeah. which we love to do. Well, let's go to Jerusalem now. We're going to hear from Shimon Gibson and he's going to speak to us about the Zion Gate. Zion Gate is located on the traditional Mount Zion on the southern side of the old city. And the gate itself uh, dates from the time of Suleiman the Magnificent, mid 16th century. It's built on the remains of a medieval tower, Ayyubid apparently, from the beginning of the 13th century. Archaeological excavations revealed part of that original gate. There are perhaps earlier gates there, but none have been excavated uh, to date. The gate itself led out of uh, the old city to uh, the area of the summit of Mount Zion, on which there are a number of places connected to uh, scripture. One of them is the place of the tomb of King David. The other is the, the traditional uh, uh, place of the Last Supper. These are located on the summit. I'm actually standing here within an archeological excavation just below Zion Gate. And in this area, according to tradition, you had the house of uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, who uh, saw Jesus and uh, deliberated about what to do about him prior to him being taken to the Praetorium for trial in front of the Roman governor, uh, Pontius Pilate. Now, these excavations have revealed palatial buildings dating from the first century. The people who lived here were apparently priestly families uh, who were associated with some of these well-known uh, uh, priests of that uh, uh, period in time. And the archaeological excavations have revealed some amazing finds dating back to that time. Tourists love to pass through the gates of this remarkable old city. It's like walking through a time tunnel back to the period of biblical prophets and kings. We talked to one of the tour guides, Tamar, whose family has lived in this area for 10 generations. Tamar, thank you for being with us. I know that you are an expert on the gates. Could you say something about the importance of the discovery of these gates relative to the Aliyah and people coming back to Israel? Well, it's a gate. Let's start with that. The, the, the fact that this is an entrance to the old city, yes. in a way, it, uh, it gives a feeling of an entrance, a new life. Um, and that's something that I always feel when I come to the old city. I always ask myself, f f which gate am I going to choose? And that reminds me of my grandfather, uh, Itzhak, who used to say that whenever you enter the old city, always make sure that your first uh, step is, with, is taken with your right foot. Wow. Um, and I think it symbolizes the Aliyah, immigration Jews coming to um, the land of Israel, opening a, a new life, uh, opening it, you know, starting with the right and foot. It also explains the mezuzah on the inside of that the is, right hand of the gates. That tells you exactly where the, the exit, uh, the entrance is exactly. Wow. So you know where to take that. Someone told me that the, the three valleys 
draw a picture of a shin throughout Jerusalem, that That's Jerusalem true. is the mezuzah of the Lord. That's true. Uh, the shin is uh, the, uh, the letter that starts the word Shaddai, which is one of the names of God. And I think uh, that emphasizes the fact that he guards us and takes care of us. Yes. So when you've been studying the gates, is there something that struck you the first time, an early impression, or what, what captivated you about this? Hmm. First of all, the differences. I mean, at first sight, they look all the same, but then when you get into de little details, you're like, hey, Jaffa Gate goes that way, but then Zion Gate go to the other. Not speaking of uh, Damascus Gate, which goes both ways, and there is New Gate <clears throat> and the Dung Gate, which you can go straight to into the city. So. Um, uh, the names are different. I mean, you can't even think of paralleling uh, the uh, Lion's Gate to the Dungay, right? There's something very unique in any, uh, each one of them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At Levitt.com, you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Miles and I would love to host you on our next tour so you could come see these ancient gates for yourself. They are really something to behold. They really are. There's nothing like being in the land and seeing the gates, seeing right. the entire land, right. uh, how God comes alive. The scriptures come alive. It's a wonderful experience. You know, whatever it would be, if you come on a trip or you just keep staying in contact, we love hearing from you, either Facebook or go directly to our website and you can order uh, the newsletter at the levitt.com and you can stay up to date with the current events that are happening in the world now. Yeah. You know, we meet so many amazing people as we travel the land, as we lead tours and do these interviews, but one of my favorite interviews is always with David Parsons, the executive media director for the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. David has a heart for Israel yes. and for the Zionist movement, the best of the Zionist movement that just comes alive when he speaks. And so uh, I've been moved to tears moments when we've, we've had time with him before. Let's go to my interview with David Parsons right now. David, thank you for being with us. You know, we've been teaching on the Zion Gate, all the gates, but just coming through the Zion Gate, one cannot help but think about Sha'ar Sion, the gates of Zion, and the modern Zionist movement. Tell us a little bit about the work here and uh, what your view is of the growth in the Zionist movement. Well, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem is the ongoing legacy of uh, a movement among evangelical Christians for centuries now. The Christian Zionist movement predates the Jewish political Zionist movement. That's about 110 years old now. Yes. Predates it by even several centuries, Christians who openly preached and, and uh, promoted the return of the Jews back to the land. Mm -hmm. All the Zionist leaders like Herzl, Rothschild, trying to bring Jews back here. They all had Christian leaders who befriended them. Yes. Uh, you had others who helped to stay, establish the land. Christians helped them learn how to farm again, how to fight and defend themselves again, like Wingate or yes. Patterson. Yes. And then uh, you had rescuers of Jews, Christians who helped rescue them, helped uh, them come here. And in modern times, ministries like the Christian Embassy has been We've been helping with the actual physical return of Jews back to the land, what's called Aliyah. Mm -hmm. And our ministry itself has helped over 115,000 Jews come back from the former Soviet Union, now Jews from the West, uh, from Ethiopia, and most recently the B'nai Menashe from India. Yes. And uh, this is quite a, a, a legacy, but the prophets like Isaiah promised that when God would set his hand a second time to bring the Jews back from all the lands where he had scattered them, that there would be Gentiles involved. So right. even the Jewish people recognized these are the Gentiles that God said he would beckon to, to carry us on their arms in their, uh, uh, and be uh, foster fathers, nursing mothers to them in the return. David, speaking of the modern Zionist movement, the Christian Zionist movement, uh, you've been here for 17 years this round. Uh, I think you've seen this go from a trickle and uh, maybe a, a fringe movement 
to a mainstream movement, uh, which is now a flood, mm -hmm. uh, I think denominations are being weighed in the balances at this point. Yes. I, the Christian Embassy has been here since 1980. I've been uh, coming to Israel since 1982. Mm -hmm. And so over the past three, four decades, I think we've seen Christian interest in, in Israel grow from uh, what could have been considered a, a fringe movement, people on the edge of the evangelical movement who were interested in Israel, interested in Hebraic roots, right. the Jewishness of Jesus, right. Davidic worship, Hebraic worship. Some people might have looked on it uh, in, in uh, generations, uh, a year or so, uh, uh, one or two generations ago mm -hmm. and questioned it. But now it's really moved mainstream. There's hardly a uh, prominent Christian ministry out there, or whether it's large or small, right. that doesn't have to include Israel as part of its ministry. And it's either because it's already in the heart of the minister itself, or the people are, are demanding yes. it. And, uh, you know, people want the richness of the, the fatness of the root, as Paul calls it, exactly. and to understand not only the, the truths we can get from understanding the culture, the Jewish culture of Jesus uh, or such, but also the prophetic implications for our day. Right, we're moving from sentiment and uh, the accoutrement, we're moving into a substantive yes. view of this connection, and it's really, it seems to have something to do with the coming of the Lord, doesn't it? I think so, and I think that uh, what we're witnessing, God is providing and building a 24-7 worldwide global prayer support network for this nation for what's ahead. That alone is very important, but also visiting the country, supporting Aliyah, supporting projects here. So much we can be doing in our day to play our role in these end times. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, David. My heart was glad when they said to me, Let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. So let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and we'll say, Peace be within your walls, and with all who delight in them. And we'll say, Peace be within your gates, the gates of Jerusalem. And we'll say, Peace be within your walls, and with all who delight in them. For we know that's where his praise awaits. So let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Yes, let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. That was Marty Getz, psalmist, messianic musician, with another beautiful song about the place that we love There's so much. There's nothing like singing the scripture yes. and letting it just come all the way into your spirit. Yeah, yeah. music is a spirit. It comes yes. in, it either brings us up, brings us across, or brings us down. And that music was very elevating. Amen. You know, speaking of elevation, I was thinking about the verse you were looking at before that this whole idea of the city of David and, and Mount Zion and the Zion gate that leads into it. It's right, really, Miles. Uh, you know, I, I love the scripture. And I, in Psalms 48, it says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised mm -hmm. in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Mm -hmm. it, and it talks about that this city is the joy of the whole earth. Yes. You know, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north? the city of the great king. Yeah, Mount Zion associated with the great king, King David, and the great king to come, David's greater son, Yeshua. You know what's amazing to me is that we've come in today in this program through the Zion Gate and learned about Sha'ar Zion, the Zion Gate. But you know, there's all this contention about the word Zionism, right. and it's, it's been so co-opted and so changed when it's this beautiful, thing on the heart of God to restore the Jewish people, to elevate the whole neighborhood if everyone realized what God is doing there. But think about this, even in Arabic, 
The Arabs call this area Bab Anavi Daud, the mm. gate of the prophet David. Mm. So on the one hand, contesting that the Jewish people have ever been there, mm -hmm. there was no Holocaust, there was no Jewish presence, there was no temple, there have never been Jews there. A lie. On the other hand, calling this gate the gate of the prophet right. David, understanding. Well, Zion, you know, it speaks of a people, yes. a place, yes. and a promise. Yes, that's good. Yeah. yeah. It does, and it's Sion in modern Hebrew, it's Sion, Zion. Sion means a signpost, right. and that's what this is. And this gate leads us into this incredible area and the story of God's restoration, which is really what this is all about. God is restoring the Jewish people to their land. Mm -hmm. He's restoring the Jewish people to our Messiah, right. and He's offering an opening to right. the entire world to come in and celebrate His goodness together right. with Israel. Isn't it just like our God to leave these signposts in the earth yes. that I am that I am and you know n no one can just take Him away. They can't just say, can't just wipe out 3,000 years of history. Exactly. And That's good. And da David was actually, he made Jerusalem and Zion, he made it the the, the capital of, of right. Israel 3,000 years ago. Right, right. Exactly. I mean, Jerusalem is the most holy of holy place in the whole world. It is a place where the Bible is alive. It is a place where the Bible talks about, and it's where Jesus was from, where he did his ministry and where he would return again. Yes. And no wonder it's contested. Yes. No wonder the enemy does not like the word Zion right. or the or the Jewish people from right. that matter. And that's another reason why I'm so grateful for people like David Parsons and some of the other Christian Zionists that we right. meet that are so dedicated. They understand. They love the Arab people. They right. invite the Arab peoples in. But they understand that God has built this, created it, and gifted it, right. and now is making an invitation if right. only the world would respond. And I want to thank you for your gifts of funds that let us stay on the air yes. and keep these messages coming to you about the importance of Zion and about the importance of biblical prophetic history. Absolutely so. You know, for over 30 years you've been hearing on this program this final phrase. We say it every time from Psalm 122, verse 6. And 30 years ago, over 30 years ago, Zola started saying it, and we believe in it as well. We want you to remember, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. My heart was glad when they said to me, Yes, let us go on, let us go on to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.